Hey everyone, it's Al with another how-to video. At the time of this video, we are closing the year 2020 and we are in a new normal of communication with almost everyone we know. Those who swore they would never use a laptop are now pros at video conferencing and changing their video backgrounds in a meeting. Amazing. But I have received many requests for a video on how to choose the right laptop. So much so, I bumped this request up from the bottom of the list. From those who are now working from home indefinitely to permanently, to teachers and students, to people who just want to speak to their family members across the world. So let's get started. One of the first things you want to decide is if you want a laptop with a Mac operating system or a Windows operating system. Macs are on the high range when it comes to pricing, but you will get what you pay for. They are awesome machines. They usually come with all the bells and whistles you will need. They can cost from $1,000 and up directly from Apple, but keep in mind there are not many choices to choose from. Today I'll be focusing on laptops that use the Windows operating system because of the wide range of options and pricing, but most of this information that I'm giving you here is general and will be beneficial regardless of what operating system you're using. So first let's talk about the screen size. What screen size do you want? Well this will be determined by how mobile you want to be. If you will mostly be at home or in an office, I recommend a larger screen, especially during video conferencing. This will allow you to view more of who or what is on the screen. How about touchscreen? Well, this is not necessarily important when it comes to video conferencing. Let's talk about resolution and screen size. For resolution, I would go with 1080p as a standard minimum. You can go higher than that with 4K, but just remember that will take more on your battery. When it comes to screen size, I would recommend a 15 inch, especially if you will have 10 or more participants. But if you need mobility and you need something a little lighter, then the 11 to 13 inch may be more suitable. Processors. Now I suggest an Intel Core i5 or i7 or an AMD Ryzen 5 or 7. I'm not gonna go into the details of hyperthreading and cores, but to keep it simple, the number i5 and i7 doesn't necessarily mean that there are many more cores in each processor, but having a higher number processor like an i7 will mean you have the option for more cores and memory sticks. Also it gives you more cache, better graphics and... Okay, okay, I said I was going to keep it simple. I recommend an Intel i5 to i7 processor or an AMD Ryzen 5 or 7 processor. Huh? Generation you say? Let's keep it simple. The number right after the i5 or i7 will be the generation. The closer you get to the higher number means you are closer to a newer and better generation model. For an example, Intel Core Processor i7-1165G7. The generation would be 11 because the 11 is right after the i7. I will post links in the description for generations of Intel and AMD processors. RAM. I recommend an 8 gig minimum. RAM stands for Random Access Memory. It stores small amounts of data so that when it is needed, it can be readily accessed. Think of it like having a credit card in your wallet or on your desk in front of you. Now, if you had to purchase something from a website and needed to get the credit card information, you would have to dig in your pocket, pull out your wallet, then pull the card out of your wallet. This is fine, but it takes some time. Having more RAM would be equivalent to having that credit card readily available when you needed it, right in front of you. More RAM means accessing information would be faster. So for example, instead of having that credit card in your wallet, in your pocket, let's just say you had high RAM. It would be equivalent to memorizing all your credit card information and being able to access it at a moment's notice. Better RAM will allow you to have multiple windows and programs open at the same time allowing you to multitask easily with no lagging and no programs pausing. That dreaded finger tapping on the desk while waiting. For video conferencing, you may have Zoom, WebEx, or Skype open. You may also have your web browser open to look up things that may be being discussed during the meeting. Then you might have Microsoft Word or Excel open as well to take notes. Maybe you're presenting and you will have all those open plus Microsoft PowerPoint. On the low end, at a minimum, 8 gigs of RAM is sufficient. 
But if you plan on doing more or can afford to spend a little more, I recommend 16 gigs of RAM for those just in case moments. Storage hard drives. HDD stands for hard disk drive. SSD stands for solid state drive. HDD drives have a disk that spins on the inside of it and that stores your data. It uses more power than the SSD and it has moving parts. The SSD, unlike the hard disk drives, have data stored on a series of NAND chips which can retain their charge without a power source. Because of no moving parts, your data is much safer than on an HDD. The SSD makes it more stable, faster startups for your laptop, and faster program load times. The SSD drives can be up to 5 times faster than your HDD drive. I recommend a 256GB SSD at a minimum. You can always add more storage if needed, but it depends on what you'll be storing on that drive, which will be on another video. While SSDs will cost you more for less storage, you will get a way better product. Let's talk about ports. USB ports. Look for the Thunderbolt 3. This is the upgrade from your typical USB-A ports. Thunderbolt 3 is the fastest. This is different from the USB-C, which will look the same. It does everything the same except for the speed of data transfer. In fact, the Thunderbolt 3 is twice as fast as the USB-C port. Just look for that Thunderbolt. HDMI port. This is a must. Make sure you have at least one HDMI port. This will come in handy when you want to connect the second screen either for work, school, or maybe you just want to display your meeting on your TV. Speakers. The basic speakers that come built in are usually sufficient but I recommend that you confirm that the laptop comes with a headphone port so you can plug in external speakers if you want to connect them. Microphones. The built-in microphone can be sufficient, but I recommend buying an external mic, like a lapel microphone, so that you can be hands-free and don't necessarily have to be so close up to the computer for those on the other side to hear you. There are adapters that allow you to add multiple mics on that lapel mic if you have others in the room with you that also need to speak. Confirm that your laptop comes with a microphone port. I would avoid laptops that come with 2-in-1 microphone and headphone ports as you will only be able to plug in one device and will have to buy an adapter to plug in multiple devices like a headphone and microphone together at the same time. Webcams, the all important camera. The basic standard 1080p camera will work just fine. Buying a laptop with anything less is your choice, but moving forward as we all start to use video conferencing more often, please purchase a laptop that has a 1080p camera or higher. The 1080p are the pixels, or the little squares that make up the video or picture. The more pixels, the tinier they get and the better resolution you have. The picture or video will look much cleaner and crispier. I also recommend buying a laptop that has a camera cover. But just in case it costs a lot more for that option, or it just doesn't have that option, I have you covered. You can buy one of these little stick-ons right off of Amazon. I also use them for my cell phone. I'll have the link in my description. You can never be too safe because of hackers or even of yourself. Well, what do I mean by yourself? Yes, sometimes you may hit that button accidentally, turn on your camera at the very worst moment possible. Bluetooth. This is very optional, not a necessity for video conferencing. If you plan on using wireless headphones, a wireless mic, speakers, or even a wireless storage device, then this is a definite must-have. Ethernet and Wi-Fi. This Ethernet port can be optional when buying a laptop, but this is a must-have. The Ethernet ports allow you to connect your laptop to the internet with a cable instead of wirelessly. But why would you want to do this if you need or want to use your laptop wirelessly, you ask? Hmm, let's talk about it. Because when using the internet, you can double to triple your internet speed while strengthening your connection to avoid drop meetings by using an ethernet cable. My recommendation is to always use an ethernet cable connected to your network when video conferencing, when possible. You will not only have the low possibility of getting dropped, but will have clearer audio and video. Let's talk about some Wi-Fi. You would think that it's a no-brainer that you need Wi-Fi and that it'll come with the laptop. But let's get this right. Not all Wi-Fi are created equally. 
What does this mean? Let's talk about it. While you may see this number 802.11, that's just the standard. Let's use TVs as an example. We use TVs to watch television shows. TV would be the standard. All the TV shows will be watched on that TV. The 802.11 is the protocol standard. Is the TV being used a smart TV? Does it have a webcam? Can you surf the web? With each different TV version, it will have different features and get better. The same with versions of protocol for your Wi-Fi. 802.11b gives out this much. 802.11ax gives this much. Big difference. You went from 11 megabytes per second to 10 gigabytes per second. Some cheaper refurbished laptops will have the older Wi-Fi adapters as opposed to the better ones. One important thing to remember though, if your router is outdated and you pay for low internet speed, you will have slow internet. Just because your machine has incredible speed capability, it doesn't mean that you'll get that speed. Your great speeds are dependent on the router and internet speed provided by your internet service provider. But that's another video. Having a good laptop and an outdated router or slow speed from your internet service provider is like putting a Ferrari engine in a beat up car. Batteries. Most batteries will give you about 5-7 to seven hours of life on normal settings, but this is all dependent on your settings. If you see a model that says 10 hours or more, it's usually because they have all their settings turned down during testing. Well, that's it my friends. I hope this was what you needed to get that right laptop. Feel free to leave comments or questions. Please subscribe to be notified when there are new videos. And don't forget to click that like button.